This is lesson 7-1, which is trigonometric functions and acute angles. Our essential question is, how can ratios of lengths of sides within right triangles help determine other lengths and angle measures in the triangle? Okay, so this is kind of an overview, um, hopefully from geometry. You remember Sokotoa. So, Sokotoa helps us remember our trig functions. So S stands for sine, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we have, so you have to be careful because the sides are relative to the angle. So if you see up here, that's where our angle theta is. So that would be opposite. Hypotenuse is not gonna change. The hypotenuse is always the side that is directly across from the right angle. So if you can draw an arrow from the right angle, that's going to point at the hypotenuse. Okay, cosine, so C in our Sokotoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then T stands for tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So Sokotoa helps us remember that. Then we have the reciprocal trig functions. So with sine, the reciprocal is cosecant. So that just means you're going to take sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, and flip it. So it would be hypotenuse over opposite. With cosine, the reciprocal function is secant. And then with tangent, the reciprocal function is cotangent. So that is going to be your six trig functions that we're going to be using in this chapter. Okay, so our first example says to write the trig ratio, so write the six trigonometric ratios for the given angle with measure theta. So we're going to start with, I'm going to put sine, cosine, tangent. So we'll start with those three. So here's theta, so it shows us there's our angle theta. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 21 over 29. Okay. Then cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 20 over 29. Okay, and then tangent would be opposite over adjacent, so it would be 21 over 20. Then we're going to take those and flip them to find our reciprocal function. So cosecant would be 29 over 21. Secant would be 29 over, sorry, 20, yep. And cotangent would be 20 over 21. And I just realized that this is a different triangle than what's on the handwritten notes. So um, just make note, it's just a different right triangle, but it gives you, now you have two examples. You have this one and you have the one on the paper copy of the notes. So just be aware those are a little bit different. Okay, our next example, which is the same as the notes, says, um, knowing that tangent of theta equals 15 over 8, what are the other trig trigonometric ratios for theta? So I'm going to draw a triangle for this. So I'm going to draw my right triangle here. I'm going to pick an angle where I'm going to place theta. I could place it in either of the two acute angles, but I'm just going to choose there. And we know that tangent is the TOA part of SOCOTOA, so it's opposite over adjacent. So that means opposite angle theta is going to be 15, and adjacent to angle theta is going to be 8. So then when we have a right triangle and we know two of the three sides, we can use Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so it would be 15 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. So that would be 289 equals c squared. So we take the square root of that and we get 17. So our hypotenuse is 17. Now, just like the previous problem, we can find all of our trig ratios. So sine opposite over hypotenuse would be 15 over 17. Cosine would be 8 over 17. Tangent, we already know. 15 over 8. Then we do the reciprocals. So cosecant would be 17 over 15. C 
secant would be 17 over 8, and cotangent would be 8 over 15. Okay, so example 3 is a real life problem. So this says a fire truck has an 84 foot ladder extended against a building forming a 55 degree angle with the top of the truck. The truck is eight feet tall. The firefighters are trying to reach a window that is 75 feet above the ground. Will they be able to use the window? Will they be able to reach the window using the ladder set at this angle? So we have we basically, we need to find out, we know that the height of the truck is eight. So what we wanna know is that if eight plus this length, I'm gonna call it X, or right here, better yet, let's, yeah, let's call it X, that's what I did in the notes. Okay, let's call that X. So that distance plus eight, X plus eight needs to equal 75 to reach the window, okay? So what we have to focus on here is here's our angle, theta or 55 degrees, we are looking for the side that is opposite that angle and we know the hypotenuse. We know 84. So if you think of Sokotoa and you think, okay, what's opposite and hypotenuse? That would be sine. So that tells us what trig function we need to use. So we're going to set this up as sine, but we know the angle. So sine of 55 equals opposite, we're not sure what that is, x over 84. So then I'm solving this, so just to be as accurate as I can, I'm going to wait till the very end to put stuff in my calculator and round. So my next step is I need to get the x alone, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 84. So in my calculator, I would type in 84 times the sine of 55. And you would want to make sure that even if you can be using Desmos, you can be using a calculator app, but you need to make sure you are in degree mode because this is 55 degrees and not radians. We'll learn in a future lesson about radians. So make sure your calculator says degree mode. If you're using Desmos, go to the settings and make sure you click degree. So if you type, we get 68.8 is, oops, equals X. So then we have to say, okay, 68.8 plus the eight feet, which is the height of the truck, gives us 76.8 feet. So to answer the question, will they, will they be able to reach the window using the ladder? And the answer would be yes. Okay, so example four, in the written notes, I went through one of these, and in the video, I'm gonna go through both of them. So it's talking about special right triangles, which Again, hopefully you learned a little bit about in geometry. So it says triangle MNO is a 45, 45, 90. So I'm going to draw triangle MNO. So that means 45, 45, 90. So we'll call this MNO. Okay. With a side length OM, OM is 2. What are the six trig ratios for the angle N with a measure of theta? Okay, so angle N is right here. It's our 45 degree angle. So what I want to remind you of with a 45, 45, 90 triangle is if we have, if the two side lengths, let's call them one for right now. If the two side lengths are both one, then the hypotenuse is just the square root of two. So that means we can extend that to our triangle over here. So if this side length, I'm gonna use a different color so you can see I'm filling in. So if M, if OM is two, that means that ON is also two. And that means that MN, the hypotenuse, is two times the square root of two. Okay, so I'm gonna, and that's just something that hopefully we remember, if not, something we need to know about special right triangles. So it's asking us to find all six trig ratios. So um, I'm going to do just the one that I did in the notes because we can, we can find all six, but um, it's going to be the similar process. So let's talk about cosine of theta. And theta is our N angle. Cosine of N is going to be adjacent. So 2 over 2 square root of 2. Okay, 
So we have a 2 in the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel those. So we have 1 over square root of 2. If we think back to when we did um, our radical functions, we didn't like to have, we don't like to have a square root in the denominator. So we have to rationalize the denominator, which means we're going to multiply by square root of 2. So that would give me square root of 2 over 2. And that would be the same as sine. Tangent would be 1 because it'd be 2 over 2. Same with cotangent. So this kind of gives you kind of an uh, example of how we would find trig ratios and making sure we rationalize the denominator. Okay, so then this one, JKL. So let's look at this. So here's 30, 60, 90. So here's J. KL is a right triangle with side length LK is 4 and measure of angle J, I drew that right, is 30 degrees. What are the six, six trig ratio? So again, we'll find one. Um, but I want to remind you of the relationship between a 30, 60, 90. So how a 30, 60, 90 works is the short side, so the side that 30 opens up to, if we call that 1, the hypotenuse is double that side. So this would be 2, and then the long side is square root of 3. So if we apply that to our JKL triangle, it means our hypotenuse would be 8, double 4, and then our long side JL or LJ would be 4, square root of 3. Okay, so again, we should know the relationships of that 30, 60, 90. Okay, so let's find, what should we find? Let's find sine of 60 degrees. Oh no, we're supposed to find angle J. So let's find, let's find sine cosine tangent. Okay. So this is, again, we're looking at angle J. So sine opposite over hypotenuse would be 4 over 8, which we can reduce to 1 half. Cosine would be 4 square root of 3 over 8, which we can simplify to square root of 3 over 2. And tangent would be 4 over 4 square root of 3. The 4s cancel, so it's kind of like above. We'd have 1 over square root of 3, and then we need to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So we get square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so those are our special right triangles. Okay. And then the last thing, I just kind of want to familiarize you with some of these identities. So an identity is an equation for which all values are true. So if you think about when we've solved equations in the past, if the variable cancels out and you have something true statement like 4 equals 4, that's considered an identity. So um, one identity is the reciprocal identities. So this is an example. This shows you an example of reciprocals. So we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So you can verify that by this little step. So saying sine is 1 over cosecant, so that'd be 1 over hypotenuse over opposite, which we keep it change it, flip it, or divide or multiply by the reciprocal. It shows that it's opposite over hypotenuse, which we know is a true statement. So one identity is saying that sine of theta is equal to 1 over cosecant. We can actually do that with all of our reciprocal identities. We can say that cosine is equal to 1 over secant. We can say cotangent is 1 over tangent. Tangent's 1 over cotangent, and so on. Okay, and then another type of identity is the what we call the cofunction identity. So cofunction has to do with the fact that um, in, a, in a right triangle, the two angles that are not the right triangle add up to 90 degrees because we know triangles have 180 degrees in them and we know one of the three angles is 90. So that goes to show that, so if we have angle uh, alpha and angle beta, they have to add up to 90. So that means that alpha is just 90 minus beta and beta is 90 minus alpha. So that again, when we get into, um, if you take pre-calc next year, or math analysis, um, we go through all. We go through a huge chapter talking about verifying identities, simplifying with identities. So this is kind of just getting you used to um, seeing that this is something that you will see in the future a little bit more in depth. Okay.